Hi, my name is Noah Lapidus. I am a public interest fellow at the firm of Cone Cone Colapinto in Washington, DC. And today I am speaking about whistleblowing uh, on misconduct in your police department. George Floyd's murder brought police reform to the center of our national conversation. But why did it take a video to demonstrate that blatant abuse of power? Surely there are officers concerned with their colleagues' misconduct who are eager to blow the whistle. So why don't they? Part of the issue is a well-documented code of silence known as the blue code that deters officers from reporting. But also, as it stands, the law does not support police officers who want to expose that wrongdoing through their chain of command. There once was a time when it did. In the 1960s, Thurgood Marshall authored the Supreme Court's landmark Pickering decision, which addressed the question, when do public employees have First Amendment protection from retaliation for blowing the whistle on government misconduct? The court fashioned a two-part test, weighing first the public interest in being apprised of government misconduct, and second, the rights of the public employee, who is also a citizen, and the rights of the public employer, who has a legitimate need to oversee their employees. This was the lay of the land for decades, and the balancing test was applied relatively fairly and effectively across the circuits. Where officers were unprotected, they were generally either revealing confidential information in irresponsible ways, or their motives in speaking were personal or malicious, or where their disclosure lacked any reasonable factual basis. It was a fair balance. But then in 2006, John Roberts Supreme Court authored the disastrous Garcetti decision, wherein the court kept the Pickering balancing test, but added a threshold question to even get to that test, which is, does the speech fall within the public employee's job description, or more precisely, is the speech pursuant to duties? Meaning, if it is within my job description to report misconduct to my superiors, and I report misconduct through the appropriate channels within my department, then I lose my free speech rights, because that's technically me just doing my job. It's ludicrous to think that America's founding fathers envisioned a barrier to First Amendment protection based on whether your speech falls within your job description. But that's the test lower courts have applied since Garcetti. Davis versus Chicago, 2018, where it was in a public employee's job description to alter reports regarding police misconduct to reflect more favorably on the implicated officers, the employee was denied protection, even though the task was clearly against the public interest. But the decisions haven't all been so bad. Where an officer was ordered to make false statements in an investigation by his superiors, the court decided that criminal conduct could not reasonably fall within one's job description, Jackler v. Byrne, 2011. But besides their job description, the lower courts also put tremendous weight onto whom the officer reported the misconduct. For example, officers have been protected for reporting misconduct to the FBI rather than their sergeants because nothing in their job description told them to report to the FBI, Spalding versus Chicago. Officers have likewise been protected for reporting misconduct to their unions, but for reporting the same conduct to their supervisors, they were not protected, Dahlia versus Rodriguez. In 2014, the Supreme Court in Lane versus Franks somewhat narrowed Garcetti and finding a college professor's grand jury testimony protected since testifying was not in the professor's ordinary duties. But Justice Thomas's concurrence suggests that law enforcement's ordinary duties, unlike a college professor's, may very well include testifying in court and therefore be unprotected. What these decisions do not consider is the key concern in Pickering, the public's legitimate interest in being apprised of government misconduct by the public employees closest to it. The practical effect of Garcetti is incentivizing police officers to circumvent their superiors, the chains of commandment to effectively address these problems, and instead report to outside agencies or directly to the public. Having said all that, the differing standards across circuits are not fatal problems and they are possible to overcome. And while your disclosure may not be protected under the First Amendment, 
and may very well be protected under another state statute. But those laws often contain very particular technical requirements with how you report, and they vary drastically by state. This chaos makes it all the more important that you consult your whistleblower attorney in deciding how to blow the whistle on misconduct in your department. There can be no comprehensive police reform without ensuring whistleblower rights for the brave officers who are best suited to identify and report the misconduct. Thank you.